Hi there, you're watching Gardens and Graveyards. My name is Charisma and today we are in the garden. And it is summer solstice, the longest day of the year, the shortest night of the year, and it is time for our mid-month garden tour. And I thought today would be a great day to celebrate what's blooming in the garden on the Central Oregon coast in a zone 9A today. Um, it is late morning and the sun is getting higher in the sky and I want to try to get this done before the whole garden is in, washed in sunshine because um, as you can see all the washout behind me, uh, when the sun's super, super bright, it's hard to film. So I'm going to get this turned around and get around the garden so you can see what's going on uh, because it's starting to really look beautiful. I'm going to start up here on the front porch. We have our baskets of Proven Winners Super Bells and Super Tunias. And they are starting to fill in and starting to blossom, which is really fun and exciting. This basket is looking the best. Um, of course, all of her flowers are pointing towards the sun. There's a good view of it. And I've still got some pansies hanging on, but I have confidence that these uh, super tunias are just getting ready to like get heavy enough to start spilling over so that will be really fun and the rest of the porch baskets are just repeats of that uh, we planted up these little guys they're still kind of in dormancy they're not doing a whole lot yet and then I planted up this cute suitcase a few weeks ago I did water just this morning so some things are gonna be kind of laying down but this guy is just starting to bloom. So that'll be really fun when that starts um, really filling in and having fun with that. All right. I showed you recently in um, the video about cutting down or pruning our rhododendrons, this beautiful display. Um, it's a little better lighting right now than in that video. So you could see the roadies and that one is starting to peter out there's not as many blossoms anymore this is actually a pretty good view of the medicine garden from up here but we'll head down there in just a second okay so starting where I like to get started in the garden is um, right at the entryway to um, our driveway into the front yard and it just gives me a good starting point so I'm gonna get turned around and show you what's going on out here and then we'll just do a loop all the way around the uh, around the house right starting here with the privet grove I wanted to point out how beautiful these hostas are looking and um, we have one right there the pearly la everlasting is getting huge. We have a hosta behind there, right there. And this one is huge this year. This one's big this year. We've got a few more coming up. Everything's looking really beautiful in hosta land. And we recently purchased a new Proven Winners Tough Stuff Red. This hydrangea gets three by three. And she's pretty much gonna go here, but she's actually just gonna get popped right there. Um, I just have to move some stuff uh, before she gets planted. But that's a new exciting addition that's coming here soon. You can see she's a lace cap. Really beautiful. All right, so scanning the front yard, um, we've got some super tunias in bloom there. It's time to cut them back. This rose has not bloomed yet for me, but it is putting on tons of buds. This climbing rose is climbing and, but, and blooming. The catmint is 
blooming. I just adore this combination right here. Oh, it's so sweet. And that is exactly why I grew them together. This rose is looking amazing. This is the biggest that she has opened up. Uh, in previous years, she's stayed really small, but this is the third year she's been in the ground. She was in a container when I moved in here. So I do not know what kind of rose she is, but I transplanted her and I've been taking care of her and she's looking really good this year. The white climbing rose is climbing. It's uh, taller than the red one, actually, and it's full of blossoms, which is really fun. It's kind of got this blush color, and then it opens to a single petal white. Oh, it's really pretty. And then this one, let me get around this way. All right, so we've got this rose here that is damaged by the rain, but it got to bloom. <laughs> And there's another bud coming on. It looks a little bit damaged by the rain, too. Um, then we've got the yellow rose coming on. And this one has been blooming for a little while. These just absolutely gorgeous. Love them. And I always forget the name of it. Here's a little clip from two weeks ago when this beautiful rose was in bloom at the same time as this rhododendron which is the exact reason why i purchased that rose to complement that rhododendron and of course the white climbing roses were just starting to peak up let's see this look at that so pretty um, I have a little bit of thyme in bloom. It's time to cut that back um, so it doesn't get too leggy. Not a whole lot going over on this side, but a lot coming on. So those are some perennials that I recently purchased. A freesia, sea mermaid, and unplugged pink salvia. They are still in pots and that's not where they belong. That's just their holdover. But you see the bridal wreath is coming on. I've got lilies all budded up. We've got some Siberian irises still hanging on in there. Tons of day lilies coming on. They haven't bloomed yet. The lamb's ear is coming into bloom. The blue star creeper is looking gorgeous this year. It's really filling out. We've got some yellow lilies so pretty. You missed the iris blooms. I will pop a picture in to this video. They only lasted a couple of weeks. They were not as prolific as they have been in years past. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that that I won't get into here, but we'll talk about it in future videos, uh, but they're not blooming right now. Out here, we do have blue-eyed grass. It, those blossoms are closed up right now. It's still a little bit cold. They'll open up as the sun heats them up. We've got some sea thrift um, blooming there. All, almost all of our dahlias have come up just like a couple of inches. You can see that one over there. But this one looks really good. This one's about eight inches tall. It's looking great. Of course, the lady's mantle is in full bloom. Look at that. She's so beautiful. Super fun. And it's early enough in the day I could catch how cool are these little water droplets. And, oh, I love them. Let me see if I can find some strawberries. Spencer and I were snacking on them a couple of days ago, but usually the birds get to them before we do, so I might not see any. And they were, they're so tiny. They're like half the size of a dime. 
and they're super sweet. Oh, there's one. Look at that. They're so cute. <laughs> and they're super sweet. It's like garden caviar. Okay, moving on, we've got an allium, a shorty allium in this pot. We do have a supertunia here. Uh, I think it's a supertunia. Yeah, black cherry that is just starting to kind of get big. And all of that is just kind of done blooming. We had some yellow eye grass down there and then columbines that are done, but I'm letting them go to seed so we can maybe get a good sized patch over there. Um, got this new Lincoln Rose all flushed out, looking gorgeous, just no buds yet. So everything's kind of in its in-between stages. Of course, the Lithodora has been blooming for months and months. Still pretty crazy. The dwarf snapdragons are just starting to bloom back here. Got the pink ones going. I'm still dealing with some spit bug here and there. See it there. Uh, this Cleomi is looking pretty. It's, nothing's happening yet, but it's looking good. Shrub roses are blooming. We have this, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Well, I'll put the name up on the screen. We have Shasta's getting ready to pop open. Oh my goodness, they are loaded with buds. And then we have rose campium everywhere. If you, anytime you notice this like blue gray fuzzy leaf all over the garden, those are all rose campiums. Um, we have some red hot pokers that are finished, finishing up here. And the sage garden is looking good. The pineapple sage all came back big huge patch right here and then the purple sage looks really great the white sacred sage did not come back so I will have to plant a new patch of that um, let's get out of the Sun a little bit we have more rose campium up there the rose of Sharon is flushing out but no blooms um, we've got daisies these are just a native naturalized um, daisy that are just kind of everywhere. We let them go because we think they're beautiful. Same with our foxgloves. Don't those foxgloves and those rhododendrons look so, so beautiful together. All right, coming down into the medicine garden, we're out of the sunshine. Maybe things can pop a little bit better. We've got this hookara. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's um, ruby bells. And it's just, I love that red with the bright green leaf. And lovage is huge this year. Uh, Bad Hoss is looking gorgeous. Golden oregano is looking beautiful. Walking onions have their heads are already getting bulbs on them. They're gonna walk over any minute now. We just recently cut down this comfrey. We're using its leaves to um, act as a mulch right there. They've got tons of great nutrition uh, before we get something else planted in there. We've got Daisy, daisies and geranium and chives, more rose campium, more chives. Oh, and we'll just pan over here. We've got this four foot tall bronze fennel. I just love the texture that that provides to the garden. Really fun. And then more geraniums and this weeping birch. She's just a baby, but looks so cute. Um, the clematis is starting to grow 
I saw a bud on here a couple of days ago. I'd have to search. The uh, honeysuckle is starting to bloom up there too. Of course, we have a baby dogwood that's doing really well. It just got transplanted this spring. Happy to see that looking good. The hostas are hanging in there, but they are definitely getting um, some slug action on them. So you'll notice those holes, those are all from slugs. Look at this hookara. It is absolutely gorgeous. I definitely want more of that in the garden. Um, got some astilbe putting on its blooms right here. The hydrangeas are looking good. This oak leaf hydrangea is looking beautiful. Um, yeah, everything's looking just lush and large. And I think there's anything else in bloom down here. So, but we do have, we do have to compare each year or each month our beautiful Gunnera. Well, her largest leaf has now gotten to the height of the deck. And it's only mid-June. The flowers are getting bigger. They, well, I guess, I'm thinking the, the largest one right here is about three feet tall. Let's flip this around for a second. Just to give you a little perspective of how tall this gunnera is right now in, it's June 21st. And that's where we're at. <laughs> okay, moving on. We've got some Fatsia over here doing pretty good. The um, foxgloves are all in bloom. This is the new area of the garden that we've recently been sharing with you. It's time to get some plants in the ground, but uh, my shoulder injury is acting up. So it was raining for a couple days. My shoulders messed up. So I was just taking a little bit of a break, but um, this garden tour is getting me amped up to get those guys in the ground. Okay, let's see what else we have. A delphinium in bloom. I was gonna look for my my wine wine and roses with Julia is right there. It's so little and I'm seeing a lot of buttercup around it, so I need to get out there and um get rid of that buttercup and give the Bajilia a chance to grow. The Himalayan honeysuckle has not put on its flowers yet. It's just getting its bulk and same with the twinberry. Um, you can see this is a beautiful view of the little roses up there. Super fun. So, there's not anything that blooms over here. Just my favorite little path. And... The golden rain tree is done blooming, but the vigilia, oh, it's dappled, it's hard to tell. The vigilia still has blooms on them. They are a little bit faded. Uh, they've been blooming for a couple of weeks. Look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. I just love this shrub, it's just covered in blossoms and then I love how it meets the evergreen like this one's a little crazy but um, just creates that little archway of blossoms it's so sweet okay we have some more um, ladies mantle down here blooming some alums blooming just loving these little alums they're so cute they remind, they remind me of Cabbage Patch Kids. <laughs> okay. Uh, we planted these up a couple months ago. They're looking really good. And on this side too. Looking good. Into 
the backyard. We planted up this barbecue and it's all flowering. Like I said, it, I'm still overhead watering. So, um, you know, when you do that, it doesn't, it's not the greatest. I have a little bit of slug damage in here too, maybe earwig to come out here and treat this one. Um, the roadies are all done blooming, which I showed you already. I've got pin cushion flowers blooming. Look at those. So fun. Of course, the butterfly bush is getting its height. It's almost reached the top of the house. More alliums. The angel wing mix is coming on. Really sweet. That's a flower I've never grown before, so it's kind of cool. And um, this dahlia is doing fantastic. That one's getting eaten. That one never came up, and this one's doing okay. <laughs> uh, the bronze fennel back here isn't quite as tall, but it's looking good. And then we've got sweet peas going, or those are um, garden peas rather, they're purple pod garden peas, and they're doing fantastic, look beautiful over there, um, and over on that side as well, look at down there. The raspberries and strawberries, so raspberries have lots of berries forming, I've got tons of berries Forming on the strawberries. Let's see if I can get to them from here. There's a couple right there. And we also have a ton of blueberries coming on um, everywhere. Looking gorgeous. Really fun. Um, and over here we have this gorgeous, super dark iris. Some alliums in bloom. The hookahs are looking good. This purple plants. Um, nothing else is really blooming yet over here. Um, we do have some black magic petunias that are doing okay. The again, the garden peas are loving life. The rose is absolutely stunning right now. Um, planted up this tire. The nasturtiums are going crazy. And we've got some blossoms up at the tippy top of the honeysuckle. There's another one right there. Uh, the sexifraga is finally ready to get the, the blossoms are ready to be pulled out. Um, and the butterfly garden is pushing tons of growth. Uh, mostly there's um, Minardia or bee balm in there. And there's also some Indian feather and uh, some other things in there. But it's looking lush and beautiful. Over Back over into the theme garden, I just love this kind of view right here where you can see all the daisies and the foxglove and the columbine um, it's just got this beautiful cottage garden look um, going back into the moon garden nothing has really changed over here the geraniums are starting to bloom though we have red and white geraniums around the perimeter there and then um, over here there's not much going on just yet um just kind of waiting we do have the super tunia honey looks good and we have a super tunia vista white that's starting to bloom up there so i think that's it i think that's backyards looking lush and beautiful and I'll give a little update on the porch plants that we've potted up. 
because they're in so much shade and they hold so much water, they're not pushing a lot of new growth, but they are just constantly pushing flowers. So I, I've been having flowers on them like crazy, but like the ones back here are just, um, I don't think they're going to get enough sunshine, but they still look pretty, I think. We'll see. Maybe when we get some more heat. Lavender's looking pretty good. It's time to harvest that and um, cut it back a little bit. So I think I'm going to end this tour right here in the backyard. Um, I wanted to point out that just because I'm in a zone 9A doesn't mean that I'm going to have the same kind of climate that you have. I follow a gardener on YouTube that's in a zone 9B and she's in, um, she's in Northern California and all that, all those zones mean I'm in a 9A, she's in a 9B. It just means that our frost dates are about a week to two weeks different from each other and that we have similar temperatures in the winter time. So we never get a hard frost here. It rarely drops below like 25. Um, but my summertime temperatures very rarely get above 80 degrees and her summertime temperatures are like 10 day forecasts of triple digits. So even though our frost dates are close, nothing else about our climate is the same. So her winters are dry and mild and my winters are wet, very rainy and wet and um, but also temperate climate, like the, the temperatures don't drop down very low, but I'm, it's raining constantly for her. The temperatures aren't very low, but it never rains more or less. So keep that in mind when you're listening to zones, because, um, as a gardener, we've relied very heavily on pushing like what is the winter hardiest hardiness zone and we make the mistake of assuming that every zone is the same and it is not at all the same just keep in mind just because i'm in a 9a if you're in a 9a most 9a's are like southern california texas the lower states um, are typically nines and above and i'm only a nine because i just don't get frost. I don't get that hard freeze ever, but I do not experience those extreme high temperatures. So I don't get to grow the kind of plants that, um, a typical 9A might grow. So everybody has their own special microclimate in their garden. And it's really important for you to know your hardiness zones. It's helpful to know your heat zone, but the most important lesson is to just get out in your garden and experience it and know from experience what your garden needs and wants and what gives you the most joy to care for. Um, I could certainly grow certain things if I wanted to like protect them and, you know, make special exceptions for them, but I'm all about ease and joy. And so there are just some plants that I have to just let go of and that's okay. Um, I can enjoy them in other people's gardens, um, in other places. Just gives me a good excuse to travel and experience gardens other places, right? So anyways, until the next time, keep enjoying life and live it to the fullest. We will see you in the next video. Make sure that you like and subscribe so that we can keep posting videos like this. And if you really enjoy garden tours of our garden, make sure you comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Bye.